William Martin, acting chair of the Radnor Township Zoning Hearing Board agenda, or hearing board calling into session the September 15, 2016 meeting. Our first order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join us. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have one item on the agenda this evening. Appeal number 2972. The applicant, EDA Family Limited Partnership, property located at 517 East Lancaster Avenue and zoned R5 is changing the occupancy of an existing legally non-conforming office use and seeks a special exception under section 280-101 print A, print one of the zoning code or such other relief necessary under the zoning code. Counselor? Thank you. Nick Canelia representing the applicant, Eda Enterprises. Stace. Yes. Stacy Ballard. B A L L A R D. Alan Majenski. A L A N. M L O D Z I E N S K I. As Mr. Martin stated, this is a request for special exception under 280-101-A1. Uh, the reason for the request is the ordinance provides that any change of non-residential occupancy shall be deemed to be a change of use for those purposes. Uh, so for those reasons, we're before the board asking for a special exception this evening. And this was just by way of background, this is the former Planned Parenthood building. Um, it's the Shell Drake apartments, which you'll see are apartments. And actually there's a single family residence and then a standalone office building of about 2,200 square feet. So the office building we're talking about has been an office building for years and years and years. It's about 2,200 square feet and is changing from Planned Parenthood to the doctor who is a podiatrist. And so it's a very similar type use. Um, Planned Parenthood certainly had doctors there, OBGYNs and everybody, and now we have a change to, um, um, to a podiatrist office. Uh, Stacy. Uh, how are you employed, Stace? I'm the president of EDA Enterprises. And how long have you been employed by EDA? For 28 years. And EDA came into possession of the premises, according to what I've marked as A2, on February 26, 2004. Is that right? That's correct. And they purchased it from John Shell Drake, Inc. Yes. And just in case I did, as A3, I did get a power of attorney for you, although you mentioned you are president, so. That's correct. Okay. Um, and what is currently on the site? So currently the site is a large, um, essentially a U-shaped apartment building, and it has 57 apartments in the building. There is on the eastern side, kind of back of the building, was an original single family home and that's a three bedroom, two and a half bath home. Uh, on the west side of the building is this single story, standalone office building that as Nick said, was used for Plant Parenthood since the early 80s and it was built prior to that and I, don't, I honestly don't know what the use was prior to Plant Parenthood. And then on the far uh, um, western side of the property is a, a row of garages that are connected and there's 10 car garages there. When was the complex built? in the early 70s. And to your knowledge, was that office building always part of the complex? Yes. Um, I've marked for the board A4, the Radnor Zoning Code used to permit professional offices in th this zoning district, in the R5 zoning district. And so I've marked that and made that a record of the board to show that this was a non-conforming use. Um, and then it changed approximately around 1991 it changed to um, 
uh, take out that professional office use in the R5 zoning district. And I just marked that as A4, which are excerpts from the various uh, Ranner Township zoning codes at that time. Um, Stace, I've marked as A5 the plan. If you can just tell the board, you already described it, but if you could tell the board and perhaps point out to where the office building is located. Sure. Is that good? Uh, yep. Um, so you can see here uh, on the is the southern portion of the property, and that is Lancaster Avenue. This essentially a U-shaped building is the apartment complex that has the 57 units. There's a single family home that's in the back uh, that's closer to uh, Cambria Court. And then on the western side of the building, this is the formerly Planned Parenthood location. And on the far western side is a 10-car garage. Have, since Ida has um, purchased the property, have they made any changes to the property at all outside of just the biggest change to that property was where you see in the center courtyard of the building, there was a swimming pool there. And about a year after we purchased the property, we got rid of the swimming pool and just made it into a garden area. But otherwise, this is other than general maintenance and repairs, and we just did a big roofing project. The building is exactly the same as it was when we bought it in 2004. Okay, and just to get the board familiar with this site, they have in their packet a series of photographs. And if you can just tell the board what these photographs represent. First, I'm going to show you A6. Sure. This is a picture from Lancaster Avenue, and I'll put it in relationship to, let's see if we can do this here, in relationship to the, the print. So this would be if you were standing here and looking at the single story building that was Planned Parenthood. Then A7. A7 is standing in front of the garages looking at what was the Planned Parenthood and the white door with the small peak is where the entrance to that property is, where the main entrance is, where the public had come in. That's, That's the portico area that is at the very front of the Sheldrake Apartments. A9. That's the 10 car garage that's on the farthest west portion of the property. These garages are used by the tenants? Uh, they the are. They're rented as a separate rental for the tenants in the building. Uh, eight tends to show the rear property line, which I guess would be the northern property line. It would be. And it would be this particular part is the one that is adjacent to the Moylan property, which is the little that little alcove on the northwest corner. And then A11, would that depict the part, well, to the, that would be to the west of the site and tell the board what that is. That's correct. So this is a, um, a picture looking west and that would be past the um, Moylan's entrance. And then as you look for, past that, that's I believe the Aberwick, right. I think that's the Aberwick um, apartment. And the Moylan's? Or Wessex which? House, I'm not sure which one's which. And, and the Moylan's, what's the Moylan's? The Moylan's is um, a couple uh, that has a um, flag lot that is a driveway here, and then their property is behind in that northwest corner. Okay. Um, A12, this looks like the eastern? That is standing at the front of the apartment complex where that large rounded portico is, looking east uh, towards Cambria Court. And what is that building? I believe that's an office building. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then finally, 813, is that across Lancaster Avenue? Looking that south? is. That's at the, uh, I believe they're St. David's condos uh, right across the street. As you go further down past St. David's condos going east, what do you have? So if you're going east, you run into where the restaurants, um, Fleming's, and the Philadelphia Sports Center is. That's on your side of the street. On my side of the street. And then on the opposite side is what was the old National Penn Bank building, and it's actually now where the Foot and Ankle Institute is located, um, as well as the REMAX offices are there. And then if you head west, you have the Aberwick and the Wessex House, and just past west that. West on your side of the street. West on our side of the street. You would also have have um, some office buildings that kind of fit in with probably what was that zoning prior to 1991. And as you mentioned, going further east, you have some smaller office buildings, and then you run into large 555 Lancaster Avenue building, Correct. which is the major office right. structure. And then on the other side across from that is the 
There's the little office building. Be, be the right, giant. And then, and then the giant and uh, Bed Bath & Beyond is at that location. Nick, Nick could I interrupt with two quick questions? Sure. How long has Planned Parenthood been out? Uh, they've been out for a little under a year. Okay. And second, just, I think it's somewhat self-explanatory, but just walk us through the handwritten notes on A5, the big plan relating to parking. Certainly. Okay. So uh, Nick had asked us to just take a survey of what the current uh, parking layout was in the building because there is assigned parking for the apartments that are there. So we went out and um, just clarified where some of those parking spots are. And where you see a square that has a V in it is a visitor's parking. And uh, so on Lancaster Avenue, you would see uh, five spaces starting from the west where the garages are going east. There's five spaces, then 15, then seven. Those are assigned to apartments. As you go east toward on Cambria Court, those are also assigned to apartments. And at the rear of the parcel, which is the most um, northern part, there are also apartments that are or parking spaces that are assigned. The, par the parking spaces that are on the western side of the apartment building are assigned to apartments. And then some of the apart, of the part, sorry, I'm too many Ps. Um, some that are on the parking spaces on the western side near the Moylan property, some of those are apartment assigned, apartment si apart assigned parking spaces for apartments. And then the, the balance of those, the eight, uh, adjacent to where the garages and the Moylan property are and the property around the old Plant Parenthood are open spaces that were used by Plant Parenthood um, for staff and for customers coming in. Have you changed the parking since you acquired it? No. Um, now you meant we've been talking about Plant Parenthood, the former tenant, um, and you had mentioned Plant Parenthood was at the site for how long? Since 1982, I checked the lease that we had gotten from John Sheldrake, and the original lease was 1982. And how did they use it? What is, tell how Planned Parenthood so, used this site. So Planned Parenthood used that site for OBGYN care. I think their primary demographic that they were hitting were younger um, females in a lot of the college area, uh, right, in the, right in our area. They um, did provide, you know, in, in uh, they provided uh, appointments and uh, you know availability for birth control. They did not do any pregnancy termination there at all. It really was a affordable OBGYN office for young women. And they had um, two to three doctors on staff. They had- um, that, How many were there at any peak time? Two to three, and so, and when they were really busy, um, they had four. Um, they had nurse practitioners as well that probably were three to four that saw patients. They had a lot of patient rooms inside, and um, and consult rooms as well, and uh, and then you know they could see anywhere from eight to ten patients at a single time in that facility. What was their hours of operation? They had they had. Um, mostly business hours, and then they had several uh, evening hours. And I don't remember the, what dates they were or what times they were, but it would be like a Tuesday and a Thursday would be till eight o'clock at night. Okay, um, were you ever aware of any parking problems on this site? No, and the residents there would definitely complain and let us know if there was an issue. So we did not have a problem with that. And you know what the doctor is doing here. Yes. Correct, and he'll testify to that in a minute. Yep. And um, do you feel that is any more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists with Pan Planned Parenthood? Um, no, and I feel that their hours are probably going to be um, more in line where uh, the apartment dwellers are off at work during the day, and that's when his main office hours are. And then uh, when people are coming home, they tend to be closed and will you know, have, there will be more available spaces than probably they would ever need. Has the office building, I think we already testified to this, but the office building, has it been modified at all since even Planned Parenthood left? No, no. Okay, so it's always been 
It's always been that building. size. It's, um, you know, they've made some small changes in, t in the interior and some upgrades. And uh, when the doctor comes in, uh, we would like to obviously bring it up to code for handicap accessibility restrooms and sprinkler systems and things like that. Um, but otherwise, it really is not changing or expanding in any way. Okay, thanks. Any questions for Stace? Okay, thank you. Ellen. And again, could you please state your name for the board, Alan? Alan Majenski. And what's your profession? Um, podiatry. And how long have you been a podiatrist? Since 1986. Okay. Um, what's your relationship to Ankle and Foot Medical Center? Ankle and Foot Medical Center, um, I'm a partner within the practice. Uh, there are three other partners in the practice as well. Okay. And where is it currently located? Um, currently, we're at 528 East Lancaster Avenue, but we also have two offices in Philadelphia and one in Doylestown and one in Marlton, New Jersey. Uh, will you still be occupying the 528 if you enter into this lease? No. Um, where is 528? Is that across the street? 528 is essentially across the street a little bit east, um, what most folks know as the Remax building with the balloon out front. And how long have you been there? Been there for five years. And uh, were you located in Radnor prior to that time? Or? Um, actually, we were at Penn Medicine at Radnor for several years. Um, and uh, how many square feet do you currently occupy? Currently, I have 2,500 square feet. So this is less square footage? A little bit less, yes. All right. And uh, what does uh, the practice do? Um, we do general podiatry, um, foot and ankle care. Uh, so we get some trauma patients from the hospitals and the surgery centers in the area, um, as well as pre- and post-operative surgical patients. Okay. Um, will you be doing any overnight stays or any general anesthesia? Absolutely not. Uh, ha are you ex intending to expand the building at all? Not at all. Uh, will you be making some interior renovations? Yes. Okay. Just making it suitable yeah. for your practice? Basically modernizing it to some extent and some of the code things, issues that uh, Stacy brought up. Okay. And looking at peak time, could you tell the board what we would expect as far as doctors, patients, nurses, staff? We're basically nine to five. I have three children. I need to get home. Nine to five. Uh, is that um, Monday through Saturday? or Monday through Friday, actually. Right. Um, too busy on Saturdays. And um, basically, there's um, one doctor at any given um, time during that period. And uh, sometimes I have a resident from Penn that comes up and assists me. And mostly, uh, there's two staff members that uh, maintain the practice. We're pretty and lean. how many patients would you have there at any one time? Anywhere from four to six patients an hour. Okay. But, and how about at one time? Would that be mainly two, one waiting, one? Yeah, maybe, maybe two in a room and one being seen and as one room is changing over. Three treatment rooms. And would the use be any different than at least the doctors used that Planned, Penn Medicine, or that Planned Parenthood was using? Obviously doing different type of medicine, but um, I'm, I'm sure the hours and type of I mean, the extent of procedures would be similar. Okay, that's all I have. Does anyone have any questions for either of these witnesses? Hey, Doctor, I, um, and I'm sure you're hoping for a lot of traffic, but uh, <laughs> do you have any uh, thoughts on, on what the traffic will be with your practice as opposed to what it has been, and, and maybe you're not the right person to ask this, but do um, you have any thoughts on that? Um, I, I wouldn't expect the traffic to be any different than it is right now. Um, we're essentially just moving across the street and um, we're not looking to be expanding, adding hours or anything else. So, I mean, the traffic will be what it currently is now. Like I said, the four to six patients an hour. Would you have less patients than what plant, at least according to what Stacy stated that Planned Parenthood had at the site at any one time? From, from what it sounds like Planned Parenthood is, yes, it'd be less patients. Any other questions? Is there anyone else here in attendance at the meeting who wants to speak to this matter? Nick, is there anything else that you want to put in any connection with uh, your case? I would just ask that the record or the exhibits, exhibits be made part of the record, please. Okay. Cool. First, any general discussion among board members? Just, um, it doesn't look like this use is any more detrimental than the use that existed uh, under Planned Parenthood. So, um, that that's the wording from the code. Um, I don't really have any other thoughts than that. Would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the applicant be granted the relief requested in the application based on the testimony presented here this evening. 
Second to that motion. Second. I'll second. Is there any discussion of the motion? Seeing no discussion of the motion, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 No opposed. Thank you. You have your relief. Thank you. And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.